I was asked to uh, provide this talk. Um, I'm a little bit of an outsider. I've studied uh, viral infections a lot. Uh, I have a great interest in dementia, uh, but uh, really for the most part, um, a lot of the dementia investigations have uh, gone into uh, various genomic studies and uh, studies of uh, misfolded proteins, et cetera. Uh, so the old thoughts that perhaps a viral infection might be important in terms of dementing illness has kind of fallen by the wayside. But uh, Dr. Seth Love, uh, who was one of the organizers, um, uh, he and I both uh, produced a chapter for uh, Greenfield's Neuropathology on Viral Infections, and, and we thought we'd re revisit the topic. Um, and so uh, this gave me an opportunity to look at some of the mechanisms. We looked at it, how viruses uh, cause brain damage uh, and relate those to the neurodegenerative disorders. What I try to do is start by putting it in historical context um, of what does infectious disease have to do with dementia. Uh, back when Alzheimer, back in the early 1900, um, described his first case, August D was a, a woman in her 50s um, who had an, what he described as an unusual um, dementing illness. He thought it was a, a rare entity um, and described the classic plaques and um, tangles that we've uh, always associated with the neuropathologic diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. The reality though was that in 1900, uh, the most common cause of dementia was syphilis, uh, which is of course an infectious disease. It's caused by a spirochete. Uh, and it's a very unusual disease in that uh, individuals um, are infected uh, for decades. Um, and some of them just through immune exhaustion um, end up developing both cardiac and neurologic disease. And so, um, and so when syphilis was introduced to the old world um, in around 1400, uh, it eventually became uh, a very common infection with 20% of, uh, of people uh, developing syphilitic infection and about 5% of those um, went on to develop uh, a dementing illness. So in 1900, and of course, during the First World War, uh, syphilis was one of the more uh, common, at least if you will, plagues of the mind. Um, and uh, with the introduction of antibiotics, the good news was that uh, syphilis basically is treated by a very minimal dose of penicillin, uh, and so it dropped off the map. But another thing happened during that same time with the introduction of antibiotics, and that was the extension of a human lifespan. And so uh, we've seen a dramatic increase in the length of time uh, that humans are now living. Um, and with that, uh, we've seen the emergence of what are called age-related dementias, uh, which Alzheimer's is a good example. Uh, these are diseases that for the most part uh, don't affect individuals until they're above 65. Uh, there are some genetic causes, of course, where uh, there's there are uh, instances of, uh, of an Alzheimer-like dementia uh, in families uh, that have uh, particular mutations. But for the most part, um, the uh, age-related dementias have uh, replaced the old infectious dementias. That still then leaves the possibility uh, that um, some of the viral infections that we experience during our lifetime uh, might contribute to this age-related dementing uh, illness. So um, a lot of people have taken techniques, um, very sophisticated uh, molecular techniques to try to identify uh, pathogens and in particular viruses uh, that are in the brains of individuals with Alzheimer's disease to make an association. Those haven't been incredibly fruitful. They're, they generate a lot of heat, uh, but not a lot of light. Recently, uh, with the introduction of a technique called uh, metagenomic next generation sequencing, um, we've been taking a very broad uh, approach to trying to identify any infectious agent in the brains of individuals with uh, dementing illness. And to cut to the chase of lots and lots of papers, I think uh, the conclusion is that there's no evidence that the virus is directly, that any virus is directly present uh, in the brains of individuals with uh, dementing illness. I've tried to dispatch with that early in my talk and then, and then move on to let's flip the question around. Okay, let's say, let's not try to look for an agent. Let's look at what viruses do to the brain um, and try to figure out from that, could they be responsible in some way for um, exacerbating age-related effects in the brain uh, in terms of dementia? We piloted um, just a um, just by examining all sorts of different acute and chronic viruses and looking at how they uh, cause brain damage, really come to the conclusion that none of them, with very rare exception, um, cause any of the pathological changes that we associate with dementia. 
that is what Alzheimer described, plaques and tangles in particular, uh, but that particular neuronal loss uh, and synaptic degeneration that eventually became attached to that name. In terms of a direct viral cause, whether it be acute or chronic viral infection, I think there is little evidence um, that uh, the current viruses that we know of uh, cause that disease. There's exceptions, certain um, measles-related diseases in uh, individuals, uh, possibly those who are immunosuppressed can cause uh, some sort of degenerative changes. But for the most part, I think we can exclude a direct role of viruses in mediating degeneration, but there may be many indirect roles. Uh, that is, uh, viral infections, as we all know, causes great stress. That stress can be manifest on um, uh, the metabolism of the brain and lead to degenerative changes. But I think we need to make the question more sophisticated uh, than we have in the past.